Imagine you are building a powerful backend system that can seamlessly handle requests, process data and serve responses, all while staying organized, scalable and easy to maintain. Sounds exciting, right? That's exactly what we'll be doing in this tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, you won't just know how to build a REST API with Flask, but you'll also master structuring it the right way. So guys, watch this video till the end if you want to learn more about it. Now, before we move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got professional certificate in AI and machine learning program in collaboration with IBM. In this course, you're going to learn about core topics such as AI automation, chat GPT, LLMs, deep learning, neural network, chatbots, agentic frameworks, and many more. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now guys, before moving ahead, let us try to understand about REST API. So REST stands for Representation State Transfer Protocol. It is a kind of a web service that basically allows clients like web apps and mobile apps to interact with the server using HTTP methods. Now, you would be dealing with methods like get, post, put, delete. Now, if I talk about get method, guys, so get is all about retrieving a data, okay? And if you want to use post HTTP method, it means like we'll be creating any new data. Similarly, if you talk about put, then this given method updates the existing data. Suppose, for example, you have this data along with you, which you just recently entered using the form and in which you entered your name, ID, and your given designation. Now, suppose I want to send an STP request where I want to change this data, the current designation to something else. So for the same purpose, you'll be using put as a given request. So in this way, you could also do it and definitely you will have one more option to delete it. So delete is also one of the STP verbs, okay, basically STP method which is going to delete the data from the given database. So guys, basically REST APIs are commonly used in web development, backend systems, and microservices. Now, we will outline our project. We'll be using a layered structure to create our given projects for this API tutorial. And uh, we'll be using Python's backend framework, Flask, to do the same. So as you can see all over here, I have created this folder, Python REST, under which you could see that I have these subfolders, controllers, models, repository, services, init.py and app.py. Now, let's try to understand the role of each of the given folders. So, as you can see all over here that in this given folder, we have app.py, which is basically the main entry point. So, this will be the entry point of our application. So, this given file is going to initialize our Flask app. It is going to register the controllers, okay, whenever our server starts. Then we have the controller file, okay. So basically in this file, we are going to define our API endpoints with the help of those methods that we discussed, like get, post, put, and delete. And this given layer will be responsible for handling all the user requests and it is going to send the appropriate response based on that. Then this given controller layer is going to call our business logic layer, okay, which is basically the service layer to process that given data. Think of this as a front desk of your API. It receives requests and directs them to the right department. If I talk about service file, then in this, we are going to implement the core logic of our application, which is going to call the repository layer, okay, to interact with the databases. And it is also going to validate and process data before sending it to the controller. This is where the actual decision making happens. It ensures that data flows correctly between controller and repository. Now, I hope you have got a brief idea about these files. So we have one left file init.py. Now, this is a given file which is going to make each directory like controller, services, repositories, model act as like a Python package. So it is basically required for importing modules properly. Now, you could see this is a given folder structure and I would recommend you to use this folder structure for basically, you know, uh, creating organized code, easier maintenance, you know, scalability. And each component has a specific role. You can uh, maintain uh, your, uh, it will be very kind of easier maintenance. You can modify one part without breaking, you know, everything. And the scalability is also there. Easily you could add new features without cluttering the code. Now let us try to understand what is there in our models folder. 
So here we have file named item.py. This file is going to define how our items are structured in our application. So you can see all over here, we have created a class item. This defines a class item that represents an item. And then you could see we have written def in itself, item ID, name, description, and we have binded all these variables all over here. Just like that we do create a constructor in Java. And similarly, we use this dot given field name to bind it so that the particular thing could be what kind of behavior could be occupied in that object. So similarly, we could see that init is a constructor in Python, which basically initializes the item within it. So here we have item ID, which is a unique identifier. Then you have a name. For example, you could put name as laptop. Then you have description where there is the description of the item. And finally, you have dev to dict self. And then you are returning the ID name, self.name, description, and self-description. So basically, this converts the object into dictionary or a JSON format. So it can be returned as an API response. So you would have got a brief idea of what we are exactly doing in our model class. Okay. So we are defining all the parameters that our given API will be returning or what given data that will be adding through the post request. Now, after you have created your model, it's always a good activity to go to your services class. Okay. Now, before moving to the services, let us go all over here and try to understand. So you could see that we are using an instance of repository all over here. Now, what happens guys? So basically after you know creating your model, it's always a good practice that you should go to your repository, write a code in the repository. So let us try to understand our repository first. Okay. And then after that, you create your business logic. So basically all over here, you could see we are importing our, you know, models.item importing the item all over here. Then we are creating a class called item repository. Okay. Then you could see we are doing self.items, which is basically storing items in a memory, like a dictionary, you know, so dictionary is acting as a database. Then we have put self.counter equals to one, which is basically going to generate unique items IDs. Okay. And then you could see we have created dev create self name description and then we are using item string self dot counter name description so basically this given piece of code creates a new item object with auto incremental id and it adds to the dictionary with self dot items okay now there's another method called dev get all self which basically returns all the items as a list of dictionaries okay so that's one thing you should remember then what we have all over here in this piece of code dev get by id self item id item equals to self dot items dot get the given id and then you are returning in the form of dictionary if item is there then return otherwise do nothing so basically it retrieves an item by its id and it returns none if the item doesn't exist so you have got a brief idea regarding the get by id okay now similarly for updating the given uh, data, there is a you know div update function. Okay, so you could see it's written that div update self item ID name description. If item ID is present in the items, then what do you have to do? You have to assign the given item with the proper ID. Okay, you have to access this item. Then you have to access it name and description and return in the form of dictionary. If present, then do it. Otherwise, return none. Similarly, there's a delete function that we have created and it returns self item dot pop item id none if it's not none. So basically it is popping up or you know it is deleting the item id present okay. If that item id matches the given item uh, id present in the item then it will be popped out. Now we have successfully created our item repository and this given layer will be responsible for interacting with the database and do a bit of manipulation. Now let's move to our service layer, which will basically be using the instance of repository for all the uh, you know business logic that needs to be implemented in our REST API will be done by services. So you could see we have this file name item services.py. Just right click on this. So guys, as you can see all over here, that when the request is coming from controller, it is directed to the services layer. Okay. Then the services layer is using the item repository instance to interact with the database and do all the manipulation. So all your business logic, you know, imagine like services file is acting as a middle layer between the controller and the repository. It is somewhere here in the hierarchy of communication. 
Now, if you could see our code, we are importing the repository from item repository. Then what we are doing is we are creating an instance of item repository so we can call all the database functions. Now, you could see in this line that we are doing the same thing. Now, in the next, we are creating a method def get all items and we are using the instance of the repository and calling the method get all, okay, which we have created in the repository. Similarly, by get by ID method, the same thing that we have done for updating the item ID, we have done the same thing and for deleting the item ID, we have also done the same thing. Now, the logic for these methods are built in the repository section. So whenever the controller, for example, let's say, let's go to our request ID. Suppose if the request goes to get the given item by ID, okay, as you can see in the controller layer, so slash item, item ID, okay. So now it is going to go all over here and the service method that's all over here. So it is present that get item by given ID. So it will be calling the service instance. Now, if you go in the service class, guys, so in the service class, you have this method def get item by ID. Now, this method is going to call this given method, which is present in our repository section. So def get by ID and here is your logic written, which is basically interacting with the DB. If you connect it to MySQL or MongoDB or anyone else. So all manipulation you could do is. So there are a lot of things you could do with the REST API. Now let us try to understand our controller layer once. Okay. So you could see all over here that in this given file, we'll be creating all the important HTTP request methods that are get, post, put and delete. So basically this given layer will be handling all the you know, given request which is coming to the endpoint. So our base endpoint is slash item. Okay, so this is a given URL that is mentioned. So when your application is running on a given port, so you can use STP localhost slash items slash item slash item ID. If you want to get that particular ID, you could post it or update it using the port request and also you could delete the given item. Now let us try to understand the code present all over there in this file. So you could see initially what we are doing is we are importing our flask module okay so as you can see so in flask we are importing blueprint request and json file now blueprint allows for modular routing you could use it for that purposes request basically reads the incoming data from the request now you have json file which basically converts python objects into json responses so you can see all over here we are importing item service to access the business logic now you could see item controller blueprint item controller name service equals to item service. Now what, what it is doing guys, it basically creates a flask blueprint, which is basically item controller to handle all the requests, which is coming to slash item load. Okay. This creates an instance of item service to interact with the stored data. Now you could see all over here, we have the post request first, like creating the item. Okay. So you could see we have used this annotation item controller dot route. So route here we have to give the given route which is going and you could mention the method what kind of HTTP method you are using so suppose here we are using the post method now basically you are creating the item so you are requesting a data from the request.json so we are using this given uh, package from the flask library then what you are doing is that this data it is going to read the json file okay then you could see it calls service.create item to create an item Okay, and then it returns a new item with the status code 201. Okay, now similarly, if you go and see all over here in get slash items, okay, so in the get all items request, what we are basically doing is we are trying to use the method get request, okay, so which is going to return the resource. Suppose you added any data, like suppose let's, let's say, for example, you added a product uh, with name, ID, okay. So when you are going to go at this URL get slash items, so that given data will be returned. So basically it is going to call service dot get all items to fetch all the items that you have added in your database. It is going to return the list of all the given items. Now every item added will have the particular item ID. Now if you want to access the individual items, then this given method will be called. So basically you are using the instance of service to call this method get item by ID. Then you are returning the JSON file item, okay, in that format, the JSON format. Now you could see all over here, we have the update method all over here. So you could see we have the method mentioned name as put and 
the given way to uh, you know actually update the data is you know you have to access the given data by that id so in this case we are basically accessing the user's data by the given user id so that's why we have used item slash item id similarly for the controller we have the same thing mentioned for delete deleted the given item with its item id now similarly you could see we have uh, put the method as delete okay and then it deletes the item if it exists so you could see it is stored in the variable success and this is calling the method from the service class okay which is present delete item by given id and finally it is going to return a json data with message name as item deleted if the given item is present means if the operation is success you return it otherwise else return a error response so basically with the message as you know item not found basically 404 status code so this is how our controller is designed in this project you would have got a brief idea what you know packages we are using from the flask library okay and uh, how our given layers are actually working and interacting with each other so there is a lot of dependency management going on in this rest api okay so that's it guys so we have created all those things so guys you can leave init.py is empty right now because we are not doing the package level imports in this so this code looks pretty much fine this project structure looks good now if you go to the app.py our server will run on this given port and this is our local host okay so go to your terminal after this guys so click on terminal so you could see we are in our required directory now type the name of your given file okay and try to run it up so type python okay and then type app.py and let's see what is happening so you could see our server is running on this port now i'll be using terminal guys to check how our you know whether our get request or post request is working or not so what you could do guys you can open powershell okay now guys as you can see all over here we have put a post request in our terminal and we are using powershell for the same so you could see i have put the header as content type and the file is application.json and this is a body which i am sending right now name laptop description macbook pro okay now you could also see i also telling it to convert it into json with depth of 10 and then i'm invoking this uri to the rest api so guys now let us do the post request now guys as you can see all over here let's say we are giving the body something like this hash headers at the rate the content type is application.json and here you could see the body is mentioned with the name description okay so this is a dell pro laptop and finally i'm invoking it to the given uri which is the method is post and i'm attaching the headers and the body section that i've sent all over here to this given url now just click onto it and you could see our item with the id3 dell pro 16 laptop is created so it means that our server is running great and everything is all good now guys let us try to use a get request and see whether our given items are added or not so as you can see all over here we have updated it to macbook pro 14 with m3 chip and this is how you could do it now let me also show you how could you do the delete request suppose we want to delete this given id now the same command that you have to invoke rest method with the given uri you have to add the uri with the given item id set with the id one and i'm using the method delete now click on it and you could see message item deleted now let us try to use a get method okay and we could see we don't have any items with the id one so guys this was a short tutorial on rest api using flask and python where we were using the layered architecture of you know controller model repository and a service so i hope so you would have enjoyed this tutorial thank you guys for watching this video hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here